So it's an aquifer. Yep. It's a what? An aquifer. Aquifer? Yeah. Oh. Fancy word for water table. Okay. All right, guys, you're now sailing on America's largest underground lake, the Lost Sea. This is the largest room in the cave we have access to, measuring in at 800 feet long, 220 feet wide. From the surface of the water, the highest point's about 65 feet tall. Here at the boat dock, the lake is actually about 15 feet deep. The average depth of the lake is between 30 and 40. Deepest point, just like a swimming pool, is at the very, very back. It is 75 feet deep back there. The clarity of the water is due to the fact that there's not a lot of, it is 98% pure. The other 2% is mostly calcium, limestone, and a little magnesium. The limestone part is the highest percentage, which gives that pretty blue-green color of the lake. The magnesium causes it to look very clear, and also it makes it look like it's a lot shallower than what it actually is. Yeah. Now, the first thing we're really going to talk about are the divers we've had in the lake. We've had two diving expeditions. The first one was in the 70s. Uh, the divers came in, explored the bottom of the room, uh, mapped it out for us, picked up a lot of debris that some of our early guests were uh, departed with. <laughs> Uh, what was really cool is though, when they came around the corner here off the left side of the boat, right around that corner and where the wall straightens back out, somewhere in that area there is an opening. It's about the size of a bicycle tire. Kind of sound familiar, right? Yeah. Well, they were brave enough, they swam down that opening and about 50 feet below this room it opened up into another chamber. They tied off a lifeline measuring about 800 feet and got to the full extent of that lifeline exploring that room and they did not reach the back wall. They did bring a sonar device down there and kind of pinged off in every direction to get an idea of what, how big the room was. They said there were parts of that room that are over a hundred feet deep. There's also, they determined that that room is at least twice the size of this room. Now to give you better measurement sizes, this room is about four and a half acres in size, which means that other room is at least nine acres. Hmm. Before they could really explore that other room though, the air bubbles in their tank started collecting on the ceiling, caused a pressure change and caused some sediment and dirt and rock to fall from the ceiling. Nobody was injured, but it did cause a brownout. They said it was like swimming through chocolate milk. Couldn't see their hand in front of their face. So using the lifeline, they pulled themselves back into this room and they determined it was probably too dangerous to continue exploration down there, uh, worried somebody could get hurt. Maybe robotics now. Yeah, they, now they could get you. I'm sorry? Is the bigger room, was it full of water? It was. It was completely filled with water. So does that make that the biggest underground lake? Well, technically it's, it's not, not a, a lake. Technically it's not a lake. It's an, under, it's an underwater chamber. Yeah. So now if the water had, it would filter down to that room, yes, that would become the world's largest. The world's largest underground lake has beaten us by about a half an acre. It's in South Africa. It's called, in Namibia. It's called the Dragon's Breath Cave. Now that cave is actually a very sulfuric cave, so you have to use special equipment and breathing apparatuses to be down there. So technically this is the largest underground natural cave, or natural lake you can actually take a boat ride on, so. I know it was the biggest in North America. I didn't realize it was second biggest yeah. in the world. Yeah, as far as we're aware, it's the second largest in the world. Do these guys think we have food? Yes. Uh, <laughs> the fish, since we're starting to see a bunch more of them, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about them. The fish were originally put in the lake in the late 60s as an experiment. They were tagged and numbered, and we were hoping that they would find a way out. Somebody would catch one, contact us, and let us know where they caught it. We'd know where the water went to. Well, that was a failed experiment. We did retrieve all those tags back over the next four years. Look at them. Um, it was not a completely failed experiment. We did learn some very interesting things. First off, the fish cannot reproduce. In order for trout to reproduce, they have to have a hard, rocky bottom and a rough current. We have a smooth clay bottom, and the only rough current we ever experience is if somebody was to, you know. Fall in. Yeah. Uh, the fish eggs will float to the top of the water. They mistake it for fish food, and they eat their young. Uh, we do feed the fish. There's no natural food source down here, so we do feed them every time a boat comes down on the lake, and that's why they are following us. Uh, we do feed them back here in the back of the room. And uh, also, I will let you know that they do lose about 20% of their vision and 75% of their color over their lifespan. But besides that, they are perfectly healthy. The reason why we started restocking the lake with the fish is we had a lot of return visitors that remembered the fish. We were disappointed when they realized that the fish were not down here anymore. So we did start restocking the lake. Now, over their lifespan, the only bad thing is the vision and this color. They do live two, about a year or so longer down here than what they do in the wild. We'll warn you, I am about to feed them. They do tend to jump, if you've not already noticed. <laughs> Would you all like to see my world famous trout call? They're eager. 
Come and get it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Woohoo! Now, funny story about the fish. Um, they have jumped in the boat before. I'll bet. Most memorable time that happened was in the late 90s. We had one jump in the boat, land in a lady's lap, scared her so bad she beat it to death with her purse. Oh, my gosh. Very nice lady named Linda. Uh, 